The theme of our seminar is the believer's walk of faith. Okay? The believer's walk of faith is what we are going to be talking about. Uh, it's important for us to understand this whole subject called faith. Of course, we can't cover it in one week. It's so broad, but we shall see how the Lord will help us and what, how much ground we will cover. If we don't cover the ground we are supposed to cover this month, we shall continue and cover it with the December seminar. Basically, we really need to understand this thing called living by faith. Because the Bible says that the just, the just shall live by faith. Romans chapter I think one, let me read it actually, let us read Romans chapter 1, we shall check it out from the Amplified. It's an interesting uh, scripture and uh, I actually usually give it to, when we do the faith class, when we do the faith class, um, when we do the class on elementary teachings of the faith and we study on faith I usually give it to the students as an assignment about what they understand when the scripture says the just shall live by faith let's read that scripture in Romans chapter 1 I think verse 16 and 17 um, Verse 16, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel or the good news of Christ, for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and a firm reliance to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And then verse 17 says, For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed both springing from faith okay and leading to faith it's important that you understand the way the amplified brings it out in the gospel a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith okay disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith as it is written the man who through faith is just shall live okay and shall live by faith it's extremely important that you get that portion the man through uh, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith so there are like two livings if i can use that word there is the first li the if you read it from maybe an IV or whatever, you just you have probably always been reading they just shall live by faith. But when you read it from the amplified, you see the amplified bring out exactly what the original Greek was trying to bring out. The man who through faith is just shall live and shall live by faith. So there is the living, there is the righteousness that we receive. When we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, when we believe in Jesus, we are made righteous. Okay? We are made righteous. And then we receive life. Our names are written in the book of life. And we know we shall live forever with God. That is the first living. Okay? The man who through faith is righteous. So believing on Jesus Christ makes us righteous. Puts us in right standing with God. We are made just. As far as God is concerned, it's as if we have never sinned. That's where you see that scripture that says, a, For in the gospel, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed both springing from faith and leading to faith so faith brings a righteousness 
This is the righteousness we don't work for. Okay? We do not pay. We don't do anything. We don't work in church to become this righteous. It comes by faith. It is given to us by faith. And it is brought out by us believing the gospel. Are we together so far? So you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are made righteous. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are put right with God. As far as God is concerned, you've never sinned. As far as God is concerned, you're in the book of life. Your sins are forgiven. Uh, you, your name is written in the book of life. It says, as far as the east from, is far from, is from the west, so has it separated us from our sins. In Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 10 says, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. That is grace. Okay? You're made righteous. You don't work for it. You don't pay for it. You're just made righteous by faith. Okay? Now, when you receive that righteousness, you receive the gift of eternal life and the assurance that you will live forever. That is, they just shall live. Okay, and then it says, The one who through faith is just and upright shall live. Book of life, then shall live by faith, day to day living. Are you with me? So, when you get this, you realize that is faith for salvation and faith for living. Are we together so far? There is faith for salvation. There is what we call the saving faith. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Saving faith. Okay? It's Romans chapter 10, where Paul is discussing and then talks about Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved in verse 13 and then in verse 14 of Romans chapter 10 He says how then shall Lord call on him on whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher verse 15 and how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the those who preach the gospel who bring glad tidings Okay then verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we preach the word of God and then people listen the word of God and then faith it comes into their heart. That is the faith that will cause them to call upon the name of the Lord and they will be saved. It is called saving faith. And then after saving faith, I want this afternoon... I'm trying to help you to understand this thing called faith. Because sometimes when we don't understand it well, applying it becomes a challenge. Walking in it becomes a challenge. Sometimes we get confused when we think we have faith and then you realize somebody tells you you don't have faith, somebody tells you you don't have enough faith, and then you think you have faith, then you wonder what do I need to do to have enough faith, things like that. Is this making sense so far? So, you live eternally by faith and you live in this world by faith. So, God has graciously granted us faith to give us a ticket to live eternally, but also to help us to live our day-to-day -day lives. They just shall live and shall live by faith. Hallelujah. So there is saving faith. And then there is. The other thing you need to know. Is that there is also faith as a gift. Okay. Faith as a gift. When you read in First Corinthians chapter 12. When they are teaching us about spiritual gifts bible talks about when you read from verse 10 to 10 7 to 10 it says 
but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another word of knowledge through the same Spirit, verse 9, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirit, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. Are you with me so far? So when you read this portion of scripture, you see that now this faith as a gift, not everybody has. The, the scripture is clear. To one is given this. To another is given this. To another is given this. To another is given this. So there is, when you are given faith as a gift, I believe this is the faith that moves mountains. Mm. I believe this is the faith that moves mountains. I believe it is this faith that the Bible says everything is possible to him who believes. When this faith is given to you, there is no impossibility. I believe it is this faith that enables us to see the miraculous. I believe it is this faith that enables us to see mountains move. If you think you have been believing, but the mountain is not moving, I can assure you that faith is not the gift of faith. Because with the gift of faith, Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you shall say to this tree, be uprooted and be thrown into the sea, and it will be thrown into the sea. You shall speak to the mountain and it shall move. It is the faith for the miraculous. It is given to you as a gift. Is this clear? Does this make sense? So, there's a time I used to, I used to say, I used to think that I can't ask God for faith. I can't ask. It's basically because I didn't understand that faith is in dimensions. Uh, when I am saved, when I am born again, I cannot ask God for saving faith because I already have it. It is the faith by which I believed on Jesus. It is the faith by which I received righteousness. So I can't say, Lord, give me faith. Give me faith to get saved because I am already saved. Are you with me? But I can ask for faith as a gift when I... And I have seen it happen a number of times when I am ministering, you know that there is the faith you have been operating in, you know, and you have been growing it and what, and you know, but then you know that there is a faith that has been imparted to you. Suddenly you believe it is possible. You, you can't explain it. You cannot, uh, you just believe it's possible. And then you tell somebody to put away the clutches. You tell somebody, to, you suddenly believe it is possible. Now that is faith that is given to you as a gift. And the Bible has said in verse 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So this faith is given to me to profit others. Maybe someone has a mountain. Maybe I have a mountain that needs to be moved and whatever. I need this gift of faith. Mm. Why, I know, why I know that I can ask for it is because when I read, um, uh, when I read uh, 1 Corinthians 14, it tells me that I can desire the graces. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, um, uh, eagerly pursue and seek to acquire this love make it your great aim and earnestly desire and cultivate spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy so you can earnestly desire 
you can desire and cultivate spiritual gifts. You can desire the gift of faith. You can desire the gift of miracles. You can desire the gift of healing. You can desire the gift of word of knowledge. And this has been the story of my life. I remember desiring the gift of prophecy and God gave it to me. I desired the gift of word of knowledge and God gave it to me. And from time to time, I ask him from the gift of faith and he has been faithful. The truth is that you can, you will not have all of the gifts all the time. I cannot say that I have the gift of faith all the time. Sometime you have it, sometime you don't have it. You have to ask, you have to desire. Ooh, hallelujah. Is this um, making sense? Remember we said this, this, this week we are looking at the, believe, the, the believer's walk of faith. The believer's walk of faith. So as you fast this week, it can be something that you cry out to God for. It can be something that you cry out to God for. I believe that it is the gift of faith that, you know, that enables me. You know, when I minister to somebody with diabetes and they get healed. You know, when I minister to somebody who has not been using their eyes in some way and they get healed. Those impossibilities that we have been seeing from time to time. I believe it is the gift of faith. It's the gift of faith. It's the one that moves mountains. And then, there is... Now, we have seen that the gift of faith is given to different people for the profit of all now there is faith as a measure that god has given to everybody okay so i've talked about saving faith i've talked about the gift of faith now i'm talking about faith as a measure like everybody has been given this measure Everybody who is born again has been given. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans 12, verse 3, what it says. Are you with me there? Romans chapter 12, verse 3 says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. As God has dealt to each one. When you see the Amplified, you see it says actually each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. Each one, each one of us. We may not all have the gift of faith. But what I know, when you're born again, we all have that faith that brings us salvation. We all believed on the Lord Jesus. We all believed on the Lord Jesus and we were saved. And then, each one of us, we are given a measure of faith. Aha. Are we together so far? Is, is this, are you getting a better understanding of faith? Is somebody getting a better understanding of faith than they uh, previously had? Or I'm um, speaking about things which you already know, you're like... Uh, why doesn't he go on to deep stuff? He's like he's just uh, so much on the surface. <laughs> you know, sometimes you talk to people are like, ah, why can't he just advance to the deep stuff? <laughs> you know, let me tell you one thing which will deliver you. Everything in the Bible is deep. Nothing in the Bible is shallow. For God so loved the world is deep stuff. I have loved you with an everlasting love is deep stuff. I will forgive you all your sin and heal you all your disease is deep stuff. Everything is deep. And we are already on the deep end. Hallelujah. We are already on the deep end. Yeah. Glory to God. Now, this measure of faith, this is the one where you can grow in. You, you can grow this measure of faith. This is where you hear the Bible talking about uh, the people who had great faith. When Jesus said some people had little faith, some people had great faith. Do you know those portions in scripture? 
where Jesus talked about, oh, ye of little faith and of great faith. I believe that this is what it's talking about, the measure of faith. I can grow it to the point that I have great faith. I can grow it to the point that I can fail to grow it and I just stay with little faith all my Christian experience. You can increase the degree of your faith. And there are many ways, many things that many things that happen for me to uh, what is happening, for example, right now, as we are listening to the word of God, and when you listen to what God is able to do or what God has done in the past, then your measure of faith increases. Is it making sense? You take time to listen to testimonies. That's why when we are in healing meetings, when we have the online healing services like this evening, we shall have time to listen to testimonies, 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 testimonies. Why are we spending time listening to testimonies? So that the faith of the people can be built up. The faith is already there. You have already been given a measure of faith. The seed is already there. But it has to grow. It has to be stirred up. Mm. So, when I am taking time to pray and fast, because the measure of faith is there. Sometimes the faith is there, but it is just swallowed up by too much flesh. Okay? Too much flesh. You are just carnal. The faith is there. You've been given the measure of faith, but you eat too much. You eat too much. You sleep too much. You watch too much telenovela. You whatever. And so in fasting, you put those things down. Eh? You put those things down so that now faith can become more obvious. This faith that you have been given can take the center stage. Uh huh. So fa fasting helps you. Fasting helps you because we are naturally, because the flesh is a natural unbeliever. That's why you always hear those statements of. I can't believe this. I really can't believe this has happened. I can't believe this is a... Naturally, we are unbelievers in the flesh. I can't believe this. That's why the average person, when we are having a like a healing meeting, when somebody, there's a miracle or whatever, 80%, 90%, they put their hands on their heads, their eyes are wide open. They're like, we can't believe this has happened. Why? Because generally, they are... Generally, non-believers. <laughs> yeah, naturally, we are unbelievers. So when I am fasting, I'm dealing with the flesh, putting it out of the way, so that the faith that God has planted in my spirit, it can begin to have more room to operate. Yeah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Mm, mm. Yeah. You have to overcome the natural tendency to unbelieve. The natural tendency to not believe. The natural tendency to believe things that you can only see and taste and touch and feel. The natural tendency, you have to overcome it. And fasting is one of the ways that we overcome it. When we fast, then our measure of faith grows because the flesh is being put down. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can grow your measure of faith. You can grow your measure of faith. You can listen to stories of what the lord has done you can listen to people that the lord has used you can listen to things that god has done and as you're doing that they measure of it that's why if you are let's say if you're believing god for for uh, for healing you have a you have a uh, maybe a health situation then you need to uh get uh all the scriptures 
on healing and study them and read them and study them and then get a collection of testimonies of of healing i, I love what Anne romack has on their website it's called healing journeys you go there on the Anne romack website and you listen to healing journeys incredible testimonies so many things that the lord has done as you're doing that your measure of faith is rising then you suddenly believe it is possible i think god can also do it for me i think i can also experience it because you see you can be there maybe you have a, a you maybe your child was born with an issue and they were told they told you that this issue they have to have it for life it's something that they can't go away medicine has told you the truth that medically speaking this one can't go away then you listen to a person and they tell you ah my child had that my child got healed then when you listen to that then faith within you grows if God could do it for the other person he could do it for me then you now start to ask without doubting you now start to ask with faith ah is this coming is making so you you now in the, that's why we create this thing that's why we have that youtube channel i told you about in the morning that's why there are healing moments there that's why there are healing testimonies there that's why there are summons upon summons of healing on that on that youtube channel why because i want to get people an opportunity to listen and listen and listen because faith comes by hearing here and by the word of God, as you listen more and more and more and more and more, faith grows within you. Then now when you come to pray, you ask believing. Because most of the times we pray and we ask, but we are not asking in faith. We are asking in doubt. Sometimes you're praying for people. Sometimes when you're not in faith, and I'm going to say something, and you realize some of you, you realize many of the times we have done it. Sometimes you find you're praying a prayer but the prayer is just to soothe the person you're praying for you're not really in faith but you're praying to to soothe the person you're praying for you're praying to to encourage the person you're praying for you, you know, so yeah it's a kind of prayer like father lord let's say you've come someone who has a condition for a long time and people have said they're going to die so you come to pray for them and then this is how you pray father lord I thank you for my sister. I thank you for bringing her this far. I thank you for helping her to raise the children. At least she has seen her children and, and their children. At least I thank you that you have, you have enabled her to pay school fees. Oh, but you're praying for their condition. But you listen, the prayer is just, ah, uh, it's just uh, something, something, something. I don't know even what to call it. You know, I, Lord, I thank you that you know you work in. You know, we know that sometimes we don't get what what we want. Sometimes, sometimes life doesn't turn out the way we want. But Lord, even I can see sister, this sister, life has not turned out the way she wanted. Even us, we are surprised at the way we thought she would. She was going to live long, Lord, but now it seems this is uh, this is. Uh, this is how far you have brought her but lord we we just pray that that we just pray that you will help her we just pray that when come a child has me you know it's not you know if 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 somebody is praying for you that kind of prayer tell them to shut up or just go away that prayer is not going to help you i tell you the truth that prayer is not is not going to help you tell them to shut up just say amen just do something just go away yeah, just go away. The Bible instructs us as elders. In James chapter 5, it says, If anybody is sick, let them look for the elders who will anoint them with oil and pray for them in the name of the Lord. And then it says, The prayer of faith shall make the sick person. The prayer of faith, not the prayer of death, not the prayer of soothing, not the prayer of, you know, it is the prayer of faith. Father, Lord, I just pray, help her, help her to, I know the, the, the coming days are going to be tough, yeah, it already shows that the, the days are already tough, but I know that even they are going to be tougher, but uh, I pray for her, Lord, that in the toughness, she will see you, Jesus, who said those prayers, 
we are supposed to pray the prayer of faith the prayer of faith it's my responsibility to pray the prayer of faith and then ask expect God to move in response to the prayer of faith forget the other people who go to the hospital doing the last prayers giving holy communion you they you hear that if the person has come to give the holy communion to the patient or the person has come to baptize the patient you just know any time any time something will happen that is not the prayer of faith children of god is this making sense we are instructed to pray the prayer of faith and sometimes you just need to spend time raising raising your faith you just need to spend time in the word of god you need to spend time in the word of god building up your faith so that when you pray you're praying in faith the other way that you are going to you know build your faith is to shut out unbelief because sometimes you are believing and also unbelieving you remember the guy in mark chapter 9 the guy came to jesus and uh, basically he told jesus that if you can do anything you can help my child if you can do the guy told jesus that if you can do anything and jesus said if i can do anything then he says all things are possible to him who believes and then the man said which represents many of us i am here so many times the man said lord i believe help my unbelief and i find myself at this point many times and god has to help my unbelief and sometimes it is wiser to first spend time asking god to help your unbelief to help your unbelief to help your unbelief to shut out unbelief to deal with unbelief because if you don't deal with unbelief you will try to believe and unbelief will counter the faith you try to believe that's where somebody is praying for for God to prosper them and then you hear them saying Uganda of these days is hard Uganda is so after you've been saying Lord prosper me in Uganda prosper me in this city Lord I pray that you lift me up then you hear someone saying Uganda <clears throat> And it's so hard, I don't know how we shall survive in this country. Then you know you are believing and unbelieving at the same time. The person who is like that, the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 6, that such a person should not expect to receive anything from God. The person who prays with doubt, the person who asks with doubt, that the, such a person should not expect to receive anything from God. So sometimes it is wiser to spend time just letting God deal with your unbelief, letting God overcome unbelief. Evening I should talk about that, dealing with unbelief. Maybe this evening I should share about the Lord helping our unbelief. Because we, we, want, to, we want to be better at this walk of faith. We want to be better at applying faith. We want to start seeing results of our faith. We want to start believing and things are happening we want to start seeing mountains move we want to start saying i believed god and this and this happened not just things of yeah things of god god works in mysterious ways god has this idea this is what god has chosen for me this is it this is it god is teaching me something we need we need we need help we need help i need help I need help. Many times, you know, I, I see, you know, unbelief can speak. Unbelief has voices. You see somebody and unbelief tells you, that is not the one you're going to pray for today. You are not going to pray for that one today. That one cannot believe. That one, that one can't get healed. And, you, and the person has come and they have told them about this healing station and this healing minister. And they have come, but you short circuit the power of God with your unbelief. You short circuit, you cause a short circuit. You are like a circuit breaker. Bah! Unbelief shuts out the power of God. May the Lord help us. Hallelujah! But remember, I said there is same faith. 
there is faith as a gift and there is faith as a measure those three meditate on them they will help you in your walk of faith saving faith the one you used to believe on Jesus and you were saved there is faith as a gift that one you can cry out for and that one you when you have it you start seeing impossibilities become possible that is the faith where the Bible says nothing is impossible to him who believes with God all with all, everything is possible to him I believe that is the gift of faith mm. then there is uh, there is the measure of faith the measure of faith has so many factors around it it can grow it can even become little you can be there and you have it you had it this year and next year they meet you and it's like you no longer have it because the people you started interacting with because of the people you chose to speak into your life because of the preacher they brought to your church like you had faith and then they changed preachers Oh, they brought this preacher who started telling, hmm, I see that you, you people are praying at night. Can't God hear you during the day? You know, they start mentioning certain things and all the faith you have just runs out of the window. Different kinds of faith. Saving faith. Faith as a gift. Faith as a measure. Faith as a measure, I can grow it. To the point when it is great faith yeah i can grow it to the point when it is great faith when it is great faith you can have all of us can have great faith i can fast i can listen to the word of god i can shut out unbelief i can listen to testimonies i can confess the word of god over my life i can listen to scriptures i can study the word of god until the measure of faith that god has given me grows to the point that is great faith hallelujah hallelujah